All right, we'll call the meeting to order of the Hopkins and Conservation Commission. Um, it is November 19th, 2019. Don, we have a couple of documents for review. Yeah, from the last um, meeting, we had um, this old rat coming down, and we had an extension on the second extension permit. Okay. Just in case the first one, I don't think the first one got recorded. So I'm passing around a copy of the first one to get John Hancock so we can get it to register your deeds if it needs it. Okay, and um, just is there anyone here in the audience, this is at Ted's suggestion that we just bring this up. We had a cancellation tonight for Olson Zero Spring Street. Is there anyone here that was looking to... I submitted the continuation request for that. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anyone in the audience that was uh, sitting here waiting for that hearing because it's been postponed, so... Yeah, we just... We just posted it today, earlier today, so in case someone looked at it last week. Thank you. Yep. Ted, that was a good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, I Okay, the draft minutes for September 24th. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Uh, any questions or comments? If I can get a, a motion to approve the minutes of September 24th. So moved. moved. And the second? Second. I don't know if I got the move or the second. But <laughs> I I, you were in louder voice. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. I got so the move. Yeah. And then seconded by Melissa. Yeah. And I'm going to abstain, Don, because I wasn't here for that meeting. You got it. Second extension. Why do we have two of these? Okay, REC Hopkinton. This is a Chamberlain Whalen subdivision roadway informal discussion. Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Just going to put the handout. Just very preliminary plan. So thank you very much for seeing us tonight. You're welcome. Um, just get your name for the record. For the record, my name is John Cusick, the Polar Engineering. Thank you. Um, so, reason we are here uh, is just to take a real quick step back. Um, this project, I think most of you were on the commission at the time, uh, but a year or so ago, I don't quite remember, an order a uh, project was submitted for a 32 lot subdivision. Um, with the Conservation Planning Board um, and the Commission issued an order uh, for the um, uh, for the project. Uh, specifically, we had the roadway and the drainage infrastructure shown, uh, and we did show some some house lots on that because we needed to size that for detention and so on and so forth. But it wasn't the detailed design uh, at that time. Um, at that point, we had about I think it was about 18 or so lots were in the 100 foot. Um, buffer zone, so they would have required, obviously, further NOIs. Um, moving forward, the developer put in um, one think, of the I roads. I think, John, that was the house footprints themselves. Was, footprints. Was, was about in, in the, so we had about 18 footprints within that. Material. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Excuse me. Um, so since that time, the developer moved forward with planning to kind of sell off the um, lots, built the road on the, um, on the southerly side. Uh, the northerly side has not been built yet. And then with, for you, a couple months back, uh, with a um, home builder, I think Kathy was here mm -hmm. just to show a preliminary plan to get your, your feedback on that. Uh, I was not there, um, but my understanding that plan showed about 19 or so uh, units within the 100 buildings within the 100 foot buffer. Uh, I think everything was outside the 50 foot no touch, but the buildings were within it. And the feedback uh, that I've heard um, mm -hmm. secondhand was essentially it's too much. You guys try to pull this back and, and it's just too much impact. We want to see a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, based on that, we took a closer look. And again, I'm, we're here informally just to get some feedback to see if we're heading in the right direction, what your comments may be. Um, and so it's just a really rough plan here, which we looked at different um, Different types. Some of the houses are smaller than I think what you'd seen before. There's different product type. We looked at the, uh, the layout a little differently. This plan before you shows about 13 of the, of the lots, uh, the houses, excuse me, within the 100-foot buffer. Again, we would need to fully 
design these and engineer these and come forward. Uh, but before moving forward with that um, time and expense, we wanted just to make sure that we're kind of heading down the right path with you folks uh, before going down that, that path. So at this point, that is where really where we're at, and we just wanted your, um, your take on having approximately 13 units in there, um, how that would be perceived. And we also have um, a, a couple of the additional lots will have grading within that 50 to 100 beyond the footprints, right? So the ones that have the footprints and obviously would have grading in, in their backyards. Then a number of the other lots will, will have the houses outside of the buffer zone but would have some additional grading. So we have some notices of intent for those as well. And we expect to come in with individual NOIs for each each of these house lots. That's the that's the game plan. And we've stated 13 structures are within, but in some cases it's just a small portion of the, of the house footprint is within, and in other cases it is a little bit more within. Correct. Okay. So initially it was how many structures were within? So the original, when we 20. Came, yeah, we came forward with the, um, with the, the subdivision, we just preliminarily showed about 18 or so. Um, the plan that you saw a couple months ago had about 19. That's what the, that number was at. Um, so now we're, we're showing, uh, we think we can do about 13 with this particular layout here. Okay. So we're just trying to show progress and, and kind of hear some of your concerns and pull things out. Obviously, all of these still fully comply with the 50-foot no-touch. We're, we're not looking to, to, to get away from, um, from that or deviate from that. Right. Uh, but it was the structures, again, as I understood, was, was part of the big concern that, um, that the commission had raised at that point. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, so it's definitely an improvement, reducing the number of units within the 100-foot um, structures. So can you just give us kind of an idea of, out of those 13, how many are nominally within the 100 as opposed to, you know, um, yeah, so of a significant uh, Certainly. incursion. Yeah, so I mean, for instance, if you take a look at, at lot 30, and that's on the, 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 the road on the northern side on the bottom, it's the, the third, third one in from the left, you know, that's in, you know, by about a, a foot or so. Um, so that's in by a foot. Okay. Yeah. And then if you go over, you know, one to lot, you know, 29, that's obviously about half of the structure is in, just based on the way. Uh, Can I the pose level. a question? Is there very faint lines that are drawn in on each of these lots? Does that represent the 100 foot line. buffer zone? Yep. Okay. Yep. Exactly. That's the 100, the 100 foot buffer um, shown on there. Um, and then. You know, lot, I can't read the lot, I think it's lot 15 up on the, um, on the other side, that, that might be in the garage is, is in it, the main portion of the house. Um, you know, lot, sorry, lot, like lot 30, lot 35, that's in by about a foot or so. Um, so some are... Lot 35? Yeah, yeah, lot 35. Lot 35. There's no lot 35. There's no lot 35. There's no 35. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to 32. <laughs> uh, Excuse me, not 25. 25. The class is back on. Sorry about that. <laughs> touch. Yeah, 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 25. Oh, it was just, it, it touches. So that's by about a, you know. 21 a looks more than 25. Yeah, yeah, 20, 21 is, yeah, 21 is one of the more, more significant that the, the, pretty much the entirety of that one is, is in it. Um, so some, some are more. 26 is like half of the house. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, that's good. Um, you know, obviously we want to minimize the lawn area in the 50 to 100 foot. Um, buffer zone as well, so just keep that um, in mind as you're doing the design. Yeah. And then there's a few of these that I'm looking at where almost the entire structure is, you know, yeah. within the 50 to 100 foot. Yeah, yeah there, there are a few like that. Yeah. I mean, typically on a 
subdivision of this nature where, you know, it was basically undeveloped land and there was no previous disturbance, our preference is to keep everything out of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, so a few of these, you know, where you have the, almost the entire structure within the 50 to 100, you know, I think are going to be problematic. So, you know, lot 21, 32, 13, 29, 27, 13, you said, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, 13. So, so take a look at some of the ones that 15, are more significantly. Halfway. Yeah. You know, like 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a few of them here, so. No, okay. there are. There are. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's my comments, and I'll defer to the other commission members. Okay. In the situation that we're in here, reminds me a lot of the you know, Hunter's Ridge project, where right. sort of you have wetlands on two sides, and then you kind of, when the road goes through, it sort of dictates the spaces between. You try to put the road in the middle of, of the, to be distant from the wetlands, which is largely what's done here, and then the, right. the, the right. lots get driven by. By you know trying to maximize the space away from the wetlands by road placement. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, and I think in that case we had we had probably 15 or more houses you know that ended up you know needing a notices of intent for for work in the buffer there. Right. And, and, so, and I think I'm more inclined to, you know, allow disturbance related to grading, you know, and partial lawn area and that type of thing within the 50 to 100 as opposed to the structure. Because if the structure is in the 50 to 100, then by definition, you know, the yard's going to have to be, um, you know, there's, there's more disturbance associated with, you know, wells, um, other things that the homeowners may want to do at a future date, you know, play areas, fire pit areas, all those types of things. So if you go to pull some of the houses back but keep some of the grading in there, that would be a preference provided we're not getting too excessive with the, the yard grading. Yeah. 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 Um, One of the things that we see a lot of people come back with is that they have, um, they want to take trees down that are too close to their house mm -hmm. and they're afraid of trees falling on their house. So. Yeah. When the house is right up against them, when someone leaves close it's like that, like, it's hard yeah. to not. It puts us in a bad position yeah, later. Right on the tree lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it, yeah. I think to, to Scott's point, I think some of the the, the lots where you just where you're coming in and it's just it's you just don't have a, an option. They're, they're going to be challenged. I can, I can take a closer look at that. Yeah. Some of the other ones, though, I, I do think there might be some potential to. To, to, to make some modifications on, on, on some of these to pull that back a little bit um, further. Um, but th this is helpful to me, this, this hearing kind of where the commission thinks relative to grading as opposed to house or... Yeah, um, I mean, on some of them it may make sense just to, you know, throw this out there, just, you know, maybe not develop a lot. I mean, I'm looking at, for example... <coughs> Lot one to talk about. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Lot one. that's one I suspect you'd be talking about. Seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of them. 21. Um, yeah, 21. You know, I, I understand the predicament that the developer's in, you know, but, um, you know, from our standpoint, this was a challenging site yeah. from the beginning, um, which I think we communicated. And I think that we've been uh, more than accommodating in, um, you know, working with the developer to get the roadway in, you know, through very difficult crossings and, and wetland areas. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we understand that he wants to try to maximize the amount of buildable lots here. But I think, you know, just because of the challenge um, and the nature of the site, you know, I think um, you can expect a little bit of pushback from the commission, okay. you know, particularly on some of these tighter lots. One of the things that we, I think we can look at, too, is that sort of the, the cumulative impact, which I know is in your bylaw. Looking mm -hmm. at the whole 200 acres from 
from the Muse and Lumber Street all the way over to here and, you know, show that a significant majority of the buffer zones have been protected, you know, coupled with a lot of open space and trail networks. And so there's a there's sort of a, a net level of significant permanent wetland protection and buffer zone protection that's at play, even with some small encroachments from this from this project. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think in that in that broader context, it might show a different picture than just saying, "Oh, we have you know X number of lots that are in the in and out and that kind of thing." Right. Yeah. I think it makes sense to quantify that just so the commission has that when yeah. going through the review process. Um, okay. This this is helpful. Um, what what I think I'd, I'd like to do is just take another look at this, see if there's some things we can do. You know, lot one, for instance. I, you know, I heard if there's a way to look closer at that. And again, some lots I, I don't think we're going to have an option with, but I but I do think there might be some room for more improvement over this. Um, what I'd like to do is maybe come in one more time informally just to, to get some more feedback. Uh, what I don't want to do is, is go forward and spend some engineering dollars and time and money on that and not be generally with the with the, uh, the intent that we're all looking um, to do. So if that's yep. appropriate, I think okay. we'd like to do that. Sure. Yeah. And we will, I think, the comment on cumulative and that, we'll provide that to give you some numbers to look at. So the next plan will have some numbers associated with it so you can put it in the context of the overall development, which might be helpful. Just send us a PDF of that. I can send that to you. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Okay, very good. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yep, have a good evening. Thank you. Johnson, 6 Tiffany Trail, request for determination of applicability to replace a failed septic system. Good evening. Good evening. We'll read this before we get started. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Town Hall lower level, 18 Main Street, here all persons interested in the request for determination of applicability filed by Peter Johnson to replace a failed septic system with associated site work. The location is 6 Tiffany Trail, assesses map R16, block 41, lot 0. This Tiffany's Trail? It's in Valleywood. Valleywood. Where's Valleywood? South of Pond Street. <laughs> South of Pond. I went by there. Uh, yeah. For the record, Dan McIntyre representing the homeowner, Peter Johnson. Um, the Johnsons have started to experience some problems with their septic system, so they had it inspected and uh, it's pretty well clogged up, so we were retained to design a new one. Uh, it was built in 1986. Uh, we did some testing out there. It's a fairly small lot with respect to usable area because of the slopes and the wetlands. So we're putting it back almost in the same spot it is today. Um, this is the house here, Tiffany Trail, heading down to Valleywood <coughs> off of uh, Pond Street. The existing tank comes out, is in the front of the house, goes over to a couple of leaching lines on the side of the house, which is a, a lawn area. We're replacing it essentially in the same area. It's going to be in the lawn area, all previously disturbed. Um, we did not formally delineate the wetlands, as, as Luke has pointed out. His flags are a little bit different than ours, which, mm -hmm. is, which is fine with us. We weren't really looking for a, uh, a determination of the exact location. It was pretty clear to us that everywhere in the lot was in the 100-foot buffer zone. Okay. And when we did the soil testing with the Board of Health, it was pretty clear that we were going to be within the 50-foot uh, setback to wetlands, regardless of whether the line's there or or anywhere so right okay we had requested um, and I believe we've been approved for uh, that variance to the 50-foot setback from the Board of Health I'm just waiting for the official letter from them okay and just looking at um, Lucas's comments uh, 
number two here, it says Piers Leach Field could potentially be shifted, rotated somewhat further from the wetland. Is there anything that's preventing? Uh, yeah, I think what what they're talking about is probably this corner here. If we if we turned it, we'd get a little further away from the wetlands. Mm -hmm. I think. But the intent of the design here was to try to keep the trenches parallel with the contours, which is kind of going down this way here. As we turn it, this edge is going to be up, you know, a couple of more contours. So in order to keep the groundwater offset, we're raising the system up. Okay. And once we do that, then the grading down here gets more complicated. And we'd probably be grading into uh, or okay. beyond the lawn area. I think that makes sense. Okay, it looks pretty straightforward. Um, questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? If I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of an, or this, excuse me, this is an RDA. If I can get a motion to issue a negative determination the request for determination. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank and you very much. All set to go. All right. Don't you collect the green cards? Yeah. We look at them. You present them. Hey, and you presented go. them. There, there we go. Are. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Much. Have a nice Thanksgiving. You too. Can talk. Okay, McBride, 7 Leonard Street. This is another request for determination of, of applicability to install a sewer line and abandon assessment. The Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 at 7.30 at the Hopkins and Town Hall, <coughs> lower level, 18 Main Street, to hear all persons interested in request for determination of applicability filed by George McBride to remove a cesspool and connect to municipal sewer with associated site work. Location is 7 Leonard Street, assessor's map U19, block 55, lot zero. Good evening. Good evening. You the McBrides? Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, I'm Hi. Denise Hildreth. I'm here with my parents who are oh. looking to hook up to the sewer line at 7 Leonard. Okay. Um, my dad can speak for himself because it's just a little hard of hearing. And Jeff is here to explain. Hi. <laughs> and who's the uh, younger? That's his daughter. Vice President. <laughs> the Vice President. <laughs> Vice President. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we have a septic that's been in there since the 50s. And okay. um, we'd like to connect to the sewer mm -hmm. because we haven't had issues with it, but we could. And um, we feel it's a good time to do it. And um, we would, of course, not pass Title V. And um, so that's why we're here. Okay. Um, and then the existing cesspool that'll be abandoned in place? Yes. Okay. Um, there's a whole, I, I already got an okay from the town. I had to write a letter and stuff, and there's a whole process that I guess it gets dug up and then filled in. The Board of Health signs off on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, we talked about this at the last meeting informally, and, um, you know, I think to me, it looks pretty straightforward. Um, the excavation will just be open for a day or two while yes. we're doing the work and then yeah. close it right up. Um, was this the site with the concern that's for the high groundwater? Uh, not with the snow no. line. Yeah, no, no, okay. No. <laughs> There's a house right there. So yeah. I just went out and took some photos. Here was um, uh, the edge of the wet. There's that flag uh, that would be going through the lawn right through here, right through there. Going down the road, going down the road, tying into that sewer line right there, and there it is looking back down the street. Right. So it'll just be a straight shot, and then dog into the yard. Right, in, right into the lawn. Okay. Okay. Um, you don't have many leaves in your lawn. No. <laughs> <laughs> they, they keep up the yard pretty well. I guess so. You must be retired. <laughs> Okay, I think this is pretty straightforward. Questions or comments from the commission? No. Nope. Questions or comments from the audience? I get a motion to issue a negative determination for the RDA. So moved. A second? Second. Yeah, it did. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Good luck. Appreciate it.
Thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Yes, you too. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you can take. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll I think yeah. this is yours right then. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's supposed to be Happy Settlers Retribution Day. Happy Settlers Retribution Day. Okay, McLaughlin, 1 Oakhurst Road. This is a notice of intent to raise and construct a single family home. And we also have McLaughlin for 3 Oakhurst Road, which is a notice of intent to raise and construct a single family home. The Hopkins Inn Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019, at 7 30 at the Hopkins Inn Town Hall, lower level. 18 Main Street to hear all persons interested in notice of intent filed by Gary McLaughlin to raise and reconstruct the single family house with associated site work. The location is 1 Oakhurst Road, Assessor's Map, R28, Block 132, Lot 0. Good evening. Good evening. Joe Bacquinat, joined by Gary McLaughlin Hi. and Peter Gustinelli. They're partners in uh, the building firm that um, is going to uh, demolish and reconstruct uh, the dwellings here at number one and number three. Um, in the interest of full disclosure, Gary is also an abutter. He is here uh, at number five, Oakhurst. Okay. Um, these two parcels uh, show up on a plan from October 1924. Uh, assessor's records have the buildings. Uh, one is 1900, one is 19, circa 1925. Uh, both of those dwellings should be considered camps. They are in poor condition and um, need to be, uh, need to come down, quite frankly. Uh, the owner, and I'm going to butcher this name and I apologize if she's tuning in, Joyce Stefanski Paolaeus. She is from Virginia and Summers up here uh, on Maspinoc. Mm -hmm. What um, she is proposing to do um, is have Gary demolish uh, number one, the existing dwelling here, um, and I'm jumping a little ahead of myself, but the same sort of things are going to happen here at number three. Um, when Gary contacted us, we did our field surveys and reached out to Scott Heim, Northeast Ecological. His guidance to me was that the edge of the resource area is the face of the boulder rubble wall at the edge of Lake Maspinock. So we have set up our buffer zones. 50 and 100 off of that. You can see that the existing dwellings fall in there slightly here at number one, a little bit more. What we're proposing is to demolish the buildings. Um, excuse me, let me back up a second. They enjoy connections to municip municipal water and sewer here in Oakhurst Road. We propose to demolish the buildings and reconstruct new dwellings. This one will be for sale at number one in the buffer zone is proposed building construction, deck and stair construction, site grading, and retaining walls to handle some of the grading here at the rear. We'll make new connections outside the buffer zone. We'll make new connections to municipal water and sewer. We'll expand the existing gravel driveways uh, to allow for better parking access. The access won't be here at Oakhurst to be along the side, so it'll be walkways down to the side to reach those dwellings, and then we have some site grading. They are residential, seasonal, if you will. There is, uh, there are lawn areas, some landscape areas, uh, not manicure lawns by any stretch, but the idea is to take the areas that are disturbed and um, regrade them, reloam them, and reseed. So we have set up, excuse me, here highlighted in pink, is a line of erosion controls along the edge. Um, this one falls right at the limit of the old stairway, the landing at the bottom. This one falls outside uh, the proposed work. Um, the area that we're containing we will be with uh, wattles and uh, sill fence. Very little change in grade from front to back. Uh, won't be dramatic changes in uh, the grade. It lends itself to walkouts, so Gary and Pete have incorporated that sort of design in their proposed buildings. Okay. 
Now, what about the trees that are currently existing on the lots? Will those remain? Um, we have highlighted both the conifers and the deciduous, and those along the boundary line will stay. We have an exception for this one pine tree in the middle here. There are a few saplings out in here. We will lose uh, a few of the larger trees in through here. We have attempted to curtail our grading on either side to mm -hmm. limit the changes, and we feel we'll be able to keep a couple of those at the periphery. I think there's nine trees total. That are coming down? Yeah, towards the yeah, front here. And those have to come down because of grading? More or less with the house. It's in, interfering with the, uh, the one of the, uh, the house, actually. So it's close to the house? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's start with um, one Oakhurst. Uh, I think Matt had a few comments here. It seems yeah, to be the, com the comments between the two are pretty much identical, just based on the layout of everything and the way the plan was done. So okay. we can kind of cover both, I think. All right, you want to run through those, Matt? Yeah, so... Um, there's actually a colleague of mine that did the site inspection. He actually found some indicators of hydric soil upgradient of the rubble wall that was used as the limit of bank. Um, so I think there's the potential that the, if we were to come to agreement, there, there is a section of bordering vegetated wetland there that could shift the buffer zones. Um, so that's one item that remains uh, unresolved at this point. Um, Jeff, you asked about the number of trees that were coming down. That was another comment we had. Um, uh, I had raised the possibility if if the applicant had considered putting in any subsurface infiltration from rooftop runoff. I don't know if that's something we have those proposed at both locations. Oh, okay. Okay, good. How about the details of the delineation, Matt? Um, yeah, I don't know if, I mean, if we're still talking about the wetland boundary, then I'm not sure that's right. needed at this point, but I, I don't know, did Mr. Heim provide you with any sort of a report or anything? Or? No, he did not. Okay. And I reached out to him after uh, receiving this earlier today, and he was, had a commitment this evening, so he could not be here. So unfortunately, I don't have a resolution on uh, the resource area the li uh, limits. Okay. Um, and then the other thing was the plan didn't have a detail on that erosion control, so it was discussed in the narrative, but the, typically the plan would show a, a detail. So I think the, the biggest item really is the, you know, establishing where the wetland boundary is. Obviously that's important. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to get some input from Scott on that. Um, and then is the entire area um you know down in here is this all proposed to be lawn or are you planning on putting something else in there that um, this is the boundaries of the two lots mm -hmm. here to the east side so the work is proposed beyond that um so no work is proposed beyond that yeah that that's off site okay gotcha all right that's the limit of our lots. That's right the limit of that's the limit of the work right there. Yep. Okay. So the area around the houses will be lawn area, or what's the? Yeah. Um, but yes. Hi, Peter. I'm gonna do lawn area. I think on the sides we'll probably try to keep it natural. Okay. Because on one side there's a, um, mm -hmm. a ramp or a walkway, and on the other side there's some. Yeah. Um, Joyce has a special needs child, mm -hmm. so there will be a ramp system. We will expand the gravel drive to here. There will be a ramp system to a landing in here to allow wheelchair access. But the thought process was to leave that, as much of that natural as possible, and to leave this separation between the two. So we've held our grading very tight to the proposed homes to try to fit that in there. We don't anticipate large lawns mm -hmm. and uh, extensive landscaping. Okay. Yeah, there's some fairly small lots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, third of an acre and a quarter acre. Yeah. Yeah, not a whole lot of room to, no. to do much anyway. Okay. So, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so, it doesn't. 
you have any calculations for so you say you're proposing some sort of infiltration recharge system mm -hmm. um, could you provide some sort of calculations oh sure the absolutely yeah it's a d uh, d series uh, soils um, we went through a calculation based on the rooftop I think we have a seven by seven by four uh, is the volume we need to retain the rooftop mm -hmm. but we can include all that information as long as details on the erosion control and flesh all that out okay. Okay, and then the big item was just the, you know, the obviously the uh, uh, resource area. Yeah, do we agree on the limit? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, questions or comments from the commission? Um, yes. Just clarification, what, what did you say about the, the area or the land that's between the limits of work and the, uh, the lake? That's that, a separate lot, a different lot? That, um, the land court plan from 1924 shows that as the lake limit. Our boundary lines are shown here on the plan from that on other Based site on plan. From, we transferred that information from the 24. The limit here of the lot is 20 to 30 feet from the water's edge. All I can attribute that to is over time yeah. something happened long before uh, Joyce and Gary got involved in the neighborhood, but for some reason that edge is now 20 feet further east. And that area will be left as it is? Naturally. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a public beach, actually. It's <laughs> 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 It <laughs> 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 so depends how many people are watching. Yeah. I mean, it, the scale is horrible, but there's the plan. We're here and here, three and four. Yeah. The lake edge is somehow drifted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carrie, did you have a comment? Oh, right up to that me. was part of my question. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Any work at the lake. But my other question is. Um, does it show, and I can't see because I've done like the setbacks on the road. Like, I wonder, usually, um, you know, we try to have it at the same location as the previous work further away, and it seems like, yeah, like, is there a reason why you can't pull it closer to the road? That's my uh, number one, the, um, the motivation behind that is there's potential for a garage, detached garage, at the front side of the home since we're so narrow side to side. So it's very likely that up against the front setback will be a detached garage. Nothing firm yet. I did not want to show it and give the, the impression that it was going to go in, but it very likely could. So we, want the, we want the flexibility to include that <laughs> later on. It wouldn't replace where the parking area is? driveway? Correct. That's the spot I would say. It still doesn't explain to me why the house can't go closer to the road. It looks like there's plenty of room. But we're, so. we're also the RLF zone district. We'd need a 25 foot side yard. And our lot is only 75 feet wide. So we would 75 the whole way. Well, 75 at the street and 62 at the rear. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you're picturing a 200-foot wide lot, we'll pop in a house and a garage and not have any repercussions. We can slide everything around. We don't feel we have that same flexibility. We don't have the width that we need um, to have the home and a two-car garage or one-car garage still meet the zoning setbacks, did not leave us a lot of room. We chose to push the home back. The idea would be to meet the setbacks to the greatest extent possible. When you're talking about setbacks on the side, I'm asking, how, what's the setback from the road? The and front, the, what this is like the front. The lakefront, right. 40 feet in the lakefront. I'm sorry, 30 feet in the lakefront. So is there space to move the house that way? We don't believe so if we put a garage. But, but you're not proposing a garage. That's not on this, this what is this, NOI? So you can't, you can't base your rec what you're asking us on something that's not in the NOI. No, but this is in the interest of full disclosure. You're asking, yeah, why can't. don't you jam it right against the street? 
Well, I guess they may, based there's on a, this it, It's very possible said, that there'll be a garage there that will limit our ability to, to put the home there. Well, based on the information you're providing us right now to review, I would say that I have issues with the fact that the house is not closer to a road. I would echo that too. And had you drawn in the garage, I'd say maybe you don't need a garage and get further from 100. Yeah, I mean, typically, you know, typically when we've permitted these types of uh, teardowns and rebuilds in the Lake Massapunk area, which is all formerly, you know, as camps mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. um, we request that the structure doesn't get any closer to the resource area. Um, it can move, you know, it can get big, uh, slightly larger. Um, and, you know, we do have some discretion to allow it to get a little bit closer to the resource area. But, you know, in this case here, in lot, I guess that's lot, like, I'm sorry, one. this one, you know, the structure with the deck is fairly significantly closer to the resource area than the existing. Yeah, about 20 feet. 20 feet. Uh, Chia, can yeah. you chime in on that? Sure. Just uh, from, the, from the history, a lot of these um, existing houses were inside the 50. So typically you guys would use that, that framework as you'd want to see the, close, the house, when it gets torn down, getting any closer to the lake in regards to you know, the, the residential setback, which is 50, whereas in this one, they're outside the, the 50. So it's really not, you know, coming into that lake lake area one way you're talking about right, the reference yeah. point. Yeah. You know? But still, you guys have, the, the, you know, the, the buffer zone is jurisdictional, you know, under the bylaw, so. Right, right. No, that's a good point, Don. They're not, they're not in the 50 foot. Um, they're meeting the, they're meeting the setbacks. Right, okay. Obviously, you guys try to minimize where you can. Yeah. So I guess I would just, you know, to um, Carrie and, and Ted's um, concern, you know, maybe just take a look and see if you can, you know, pull that out of the resource area. Um, you know, a little bit more than what's shown here on the plan. Does that make yeah. sense? And in the interest of full disclosure, I'm not very sympathetic about it needing to have a garage and that's the reason we're going deeper well you got that like my my concern was the president because you're right like every other one of them was it was like you have to build but it wasn't back now that don mentioned the 50 but I, where's the 50 can you show on that uh, i can show you here so, like, right here if you look at this map uh, okay okay yeah because i'm getting thrown off because of property lines yeah that that map there, there's a lot of uh noise on it yeah, it's yeah it was a, oh, I'm sorry, I can't use the laser on this. It absorbs. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So if you can see my curtain. You know, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. Right here. It absorbs. So you got an existing oh, sorry, here, sorry, 50. and the proposed right. dwelling is here. You are existing. Outside the 50. Existing. Right, and it's about 20 feet, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah so you mean including you the deck? You might have been thrown off by this, because it's 25 feet off the property line, sure. not... Is the lake over here? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would still like to see an alternative that you know, pulls it closer to the road because the, I mean, it's an existing lawn, so right, everything's existing lawn right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not close sure the entire idea. That's one I just would like Thank to you. see that. Yeah. 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 I would like so, to see what I know you like. gave me. I can't find the pictures you sent me. I'm okay. sorry. I just want to download it from the fire. Sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah, those are the areas at the rear. One and three. Mm -hmm. So all the 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 yeah, right? yeah, that's the street edge. Yeah, is the street. Can you share yeah. that with me? Because uh, it shows how far back the White House is. Joe, just just kind of think about would there be opportunity where you have the the deck on the back there? If you were to like take that from there and put it there instead. 
that I mean that would significantly move sort of the structure of the farm. Yeah, we we away. attempted to um, <coughs> sync up the two schedules, Board of Appeals and the Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, Board of Appeals got out uh, ahead of us, so we have um, marching orders. We've got offsets, uh, variants granted for these numbers with three or four inches of clearance. So we'll have to stare very closely at, at what we do for alternatives um, in order to avoid heading back to that group. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions from the commission? No, I would just echo what Ted and Carrie have said. Okay. If, if, can I make a comment? If you look at that white house, that's lot number one. That house is further from the lake than, than most. It's much further than the, exist, the other existing one. Mm -hmm. So the idea of to move the house back is good, um, but it, it may apply with a little less push to a house that's already set back further than the rest. It's another probably 20 feet back or 30 feet back than the, the one next to it. Yeah, it's just every house gets bigger and bigger and closer and more need for a variance. We're just trying to apply the same rules that we do to all the new developers. <laughs> okay, questions or comments from the audience? All right, and our next meeting is December 3rd. So we'll continue it out to that. When you guys get done with these two houses, you should go to the other side of the lake, take a look at a few of the lots over there. There might be some opportunity for... <laughs> a little tight over there. <laughs> just, a, just a thought. Great. Well, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Yeah, open the next one. Oh, uh, the second one. Oh, oh right, we yeah. haven't legally opened that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got a hot date. <laughs> nope, get a little ahead of myself. Good catch, no. Mm -hmm. 19. You give me a giant hand cross on that. We're closing this one. I mean, continuing this one and we'll open the next one. Yep. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 at 730 at the Hopkinton Town Hall, lower level, 18 Main Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Gary McLaughlin to raise and reconstruct a single-family house with associated site work. The location is 3 Oakhurst Road, Assessors Map R28, Block 131, Plot 0. Okay, so I think... Um, Give us a quick rundown. Sure. Yeah. Um, similar owner, um, same family. Uh, camp in difficult condition. Um, shows up here. Um, structure to a deck, to a set of stairs, to a landing that pushes out uh, closer uh, to the lake edge. Um, approximately 12 feet off the boundary line in the rear. The idea is to... Uh, Expand the driveway, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, there are conditions here that require access uh, with ramps mm -hmm. to the side of the home. We'll make, continue to maintain the connections to municipal water and sewer. We'll relocate them. They fall victim to some of the, uh, to be in the locations and will fall victim to demolition work. Um, we have set up the line of erosion controls out here at the edge of that landing and set of stairs but the new deck and stairs will be pulled back uh, westerly away from uh, the water's edge uh, in this proposal. So that area will be filled and uh, regraded boom the seated. Okay. Same sort of thing, grading is tight to the structure, alleviate um, 
concerns with wholesale changes, uh, tree cutting, uh, maintain some offset to the owner of number five. It's very important to him that we uh, have some distance there. Okay. I try anyway, Jeff. <laughs> Okay, um, and then infiltration drains for proposal. Yeah, same well. sort of thing. Size, <coughs> Excuse me. Size for the rooftop. This dwelling is a little bit smaller than the other one, sized uh, here. So this one will actually be over designed uh, for the location. This one fits. This one will be a little big for our needs. All right, very good. Questions or comments from the commission? So the, the lake, the lakeside end of this house is about in the same place as the current. Structure, yes. Uh, the ex the proposed deck, future deck, will be at the back of the existing home. So the deck and stairs will come off, and that area is what will be recreated. But the building itself is almost is somewhat. Yeah, the the deck. It's our new deck is on the back end, the, yeah. the easterly end of the old yeah. structure. The deck is what. Sticks out a little further. So it looks like this one you're actually pulling back. We're coming yeah, further from the resource right. area. Mm -hmm. Same sort of thing lends itself to a walkout, but mm -hmm. we have some grading in there, so we'll the retaining walls in there to mitigate the grading on either side. Okay. No, I think she's referring the patio, to the patio. Like the last path. times when we approve an NOI, if it has these little like, auxiliary structures on it, then we it becomes part of the NOI, so it becomes part of approval. But since this is not on that property, it's not part of the approval. Oh, right? I see. Yeah, yeah. Because well, you're saying it's off property, mm -hmm. right? So that wouldn't be a, like. So if we approve this, we're not approving like that. That was. A... Yeah, because I mean, I was just wondering, is this like, you know, but we're not. Uh, we're not attorneys here, but is this like a case of adverse possession? And can you take, because this would have been the lake itself, and the lake would have been state property, because no one owns the, the lake, the water, uh, you know? So it would be especially tricky. Uh, lake Massapoc is a great pond. Right. There's jurisdiction at the land court. So it would be an onion that would need to be peeled back a little bit. Right. So. The assessment. But I guess to your yeah, point, yeah, we're all, I thing. guess we're only looking at right. everything inside this box. We're not shows. looking at that, even though we're trying to, to the get current. the determination More of the land. wetland because it's it shows probably the buffer comparing zone the old plan the land. to the new. Okay. Without a site plan, they probably said, no harm, no foul, let's show it to the lake edge. Yeah. That's the historic data. Because all they're really trying to do is assess taxes. So presumably in the future that that strip in between is just going to be left to go natural or yes so it won't be mowed or anything i don't no we know so i think that may be somewhat important consideration that if that's if you've got basically that 50 foot buffer zone that's going to be allowed to be essentially go back to nature which is probably fairly uncommon around most of this right. lake that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So we're talking this area, right? Well, now. we can't even, I mean, well, we couldn't even, like, put that as condition of the order because it's, it's not part of the application because it's not on the property. Right. But it's shown on the plan and we could note it in the finding of fact and well, we could say, the, the you know, we could, we could make note. I yeah, know, actually, it's funny. The it assessor shows it going, <laughs> going right up to That's the edge. That's the assessor's right. You know? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. The historic plan would say Lake Edge. Right. The town upstairs, they're not going to Right, disseminate right. 20 feet. Yeah, they, <laughs> now we've gone away. and right. drilled a little deeper. Right. So I mean, you could still write a finding, a finding of fact based on the, based on the site plan, and you could note, you know, patio and path is, you know, off, and then this area, you know, basically, to the east of the property line, between the property line and the lake, will be left to go. You know, natural. You could make it part of the, 
if you were looking, you know, to allow the buffer zone disturbance, that would be your mitigation for, cons for consideration. So is that the idea? Yes. Is, so, I mean, that could be offered as mitigation, um, leaving that strip, you know, allowing that to revegetate and go natural. Uh, in my mind, I, you know, I'll defer to Carrie, Ed, and Ted who wanted the house pulled back, but I think if that strip is in the 50-foot buffer zone allowed to revegetate and go natural, and that would be, to me, um, mitigation uh, related to allowing the house to get um, a little bit closer to the resource area, but I'll defer to their judgment on that. Jeff, question. So a PIB would be, in this case, would be yeah. where the original or where the land court lot line is, not down to the lake line, right? If there was to be a PIB, which I think there probably has to be, because we know that some years from now, somebody's going right. to come in with wanting to put a beach in, a retaining wall, um, fire pit, patio, place set, everything else down there. Right? So would we have, would we require a PIB that would be along the line as shown as the property boundary, you know, to demarcate that from the area that's going to be left in its natural state? Yeah, the plan should at least be revised Signage to show the proposed mitigation. It's not showing it now. You might want to have that noted. And a PIB. Yeah, we're, signs or yeah, we're anticipating the medallion signs. Not many trees down that location. It's all along, so a couple on the trees and a couple on pseudo posts. <laughs> yeah, right. Put posts there, right? So, right. Chair, I guess, or, um, so is there the same concern about the hybrid soils right behind this property? Yeah, it was the, basically the sort of the whole length of the, the, whole uh, the edge there. So we want to look at that whole area. Oh, okay. So that's like, I mean, I'm inclined to this, 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 uh, what? Whatever this one is. Three. No issues with other than the hydric. So I was making sure it's mapped correctly. And this one doesn't have a mass DP number yet? Correct. <coughs> the, the, uh, I just got the file number, I think it was today. Yeah, this afternoon. So I was expecting them to drop another file number, but I didn't see it come yeah. in. Normally it's like bang, bang. 1692 and 3. Right, I figured it was going to come right after, and I was surprised it didn't. <coughs> okay, so I guess the, um, you know, a question for, um, Kerry, Ted, and Ed is if we were to allow this 50 foot strip to revegetate and the applicant put plantings in there because right now it's just lawn area, right? Mm -hmm. So if we put some shrubs um, and kind of you know um, enhance that so it was more of a, sure. a resource area buffer, would that offset? Would that be adequate mitigation for you to allow the house That's and its current? In its current situation or its current location, it would for me. I don't, I really don't have as much an issue, but I think we should have something on the record that shows, you know, why they didn't do it that way. I I just feel like like why it's where it, you know, that there's a why it's not pulled forward. Yeah. Close to the road. Yeah, I just think it should be part of the application. <coughs> I think the mitigation is fine. I think the design is it's all like lawn and as you point it, it's, it's outside of 50. Like, I really have an issue so much. I'm not going to say you have to go with the alternative, but I just feel like we need, when they put, when people put in applications, they need to really justify. Yeah, and if it's because of a potential garage, how potential is that? I mean, right. Like if the garage is likely, it should be on the it plan. It should be on the plan. Right rather than coming back for a garage after getting a house approval. I'm not sure what the decision making is on that. But you could you could propose the garage at a location. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to build it at this point in time. Okay. What it could be shown on the plan, then, you know, the order is good for three years. I see. So you have a three-year window to put it in. If you don't put it in, then you can just come back to us and request an extension. 
outside New Jersey. Well, it's, yeah. outside. it's outside. Oh, it's, all, it's outside. Yeah. Well, okay. But, yeah, she's looking for a rationale. So if you wanted to just yeah. write something like potential future, mm -hmm. it would still be outside the commission's jurisdiction. But then they have something to point to say, oh, that's why the house isn't going further because of the potential okay. future garage. Mm -hmm. We have someone that that's interested, but we don't have a written. It's not etched in stone yet. Yeah. So. So that, that's the recommendation. I mean, you know, you can provide some type of justification. Mr. Yeah, you can put any notes on the plan that you want saying, you know, that it's not set in stone. Sure, <laughs> sure. Does that make sense? It yes. does. Everyone good? Okay, questions or comments from the audience? Okay, we'll continue this one out to December 3rd as well. Thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving, yep. everybody. You too. Thank, Thank you. Nice. you too. Thank you. Can I go? You can go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Okay, Rydberg, 6 Clinton Street. This is a notice of intent of another, another failed right septic here. system. Right with you. Good evening. Well, yeah, I, I just need to read this before we uh, get started. Close out the continuum on the last one. Oh, sorry, Don. He's slow tonight. <laughs> He's not used to being so far from his office here. I know. He can't be opening all these new ones. That slows the whole process down. Here we go. Another newbie. Come all right, the Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Town Hall, lower level 18 Main Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by John and Patty Rydberg to replace a failed septic system with associated site work. The location is 6 Clinton Street, assesses map R14, Block 2, Lot 0. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Karen Skinner, joining for the record. I'm Wally Consulting. I'm representing the Rydbergs. Um, they, and they'd simply like to replace the failed, uh, failed septic system. Okay. Um, Matt had some issues, the report showed some issues with the wetland line. Mm -hmm. The wetland line was re uh, approved, this wetland line was approved in um, 2017. Uh, was done for this lot over here, a septic system on that lot. Um, I verified the lines. I agreed with the line as it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, and as I told Matt, I'm happy to go out and take a look at it with the, um, with the person that, that reviewed, reviewed the line. Matt asked that I show two additional buffers. So we pulled back. So the engineer, I asked him to uh, pull back and put a potential line on the plan. Yeah, so just to take a step back. Sorry to interrupt, Karen. Um, That's right. So it was a colleague of mine who had gone out and looked at this boundary and felt that it potentially could move 15 to 20 feet up gradient based on the presence of hydric soils. Um, so that's, so I'll hand it back over to you. So that's why we kind of have sort of a, a wetland boundary that was established by the <coughs> applicant and then sort of this conceptual wetland boundary that we think might be about where it would end up um, if we were to go back and look at it. But again, keeping in mind what the project is and kind of similar to the RDA that was done earlier tonight, the wetland boundary itself may not be terribly critical because the septic system has to go in. It's sort of a question of where it fits. And it's so. all lawn area, I Correct. presume. It's all lawn yeah. and, and, and ground ivy okay. in, in this area. Uh, so as I said, I showed um, two additional buffer zones. So this would be the 50-foot with the potential line and it just kind of skirts through this corner. Okay. Um, Matt asked that I speak to the commission about why it can't be moved up any further. And the owner, uh, there's a 38-inch maple here, very large, beautiful tree that they'd like to preserve. And also, too, if it comes any close to the house, the grade would um, run water into the house. Okay. Okay. And this is a field, <clears throat> field septic system. Right, got it, okay. And then there was a concern, I guess, with the high groundwater and whether dewatering would be necessary associated with the project. Well, um, I just got my dewatering plan and I forgot. Oh, I, can, I can email you a dewatering plan if you'd like. Yeah, that would be helpful. Um, 
and we can uh, vote on this contingent upon you providing the dewatering plan and obviously Don and, and Matt reviewing it and just making sure that it meets their um, performance standards, which I'm sure it would. But, uh, okay. All right. And I guess, you know, in my view here, the actual location of the um, wetland boundary um, isn't really material because, well, it is, but it isn't. Um, just because the septic system needs to be replaced and it's in previously disturbed area close to the house anyway, so I don't think there's a need to go out and verify that. Um, that's my sense. So we just, in that case, would approve the filing, not the delineation. Right. Right. Yep. Right. So without the if there's any work in the house, there's no planned work on the house. If there's any tear down or anything like that, we'll definitely. We'll, this it would have to be. It right. would have to be established at that point. Right. Um, but this is for only this, for the construction, uh, replacement of the septic system. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. Questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Tom Cole. I live at 55 Downing Street. I'm a friend of John Ryberg, very familiar with the house. I got two questions. What, what is the final grade going to be? Is there going to be an increase in the height of the grade? There, there will be an increase in the height of the grade. Approximately how much? It's um, four feet. Okay. Did you take, if I may approach? Yep. Sure. Yep. I have this. I this area of floods. Right here during a heavy mm -hmm. rainstorm and it flows east to the uh, Legacy Farms Pond. So was there any consideration to take into effect? Cause so this area floods? Yes. This right is just behind the house. Yeah, towards that Legacy Farms. There's a little stone wall here someplace. That's back here. Is this Clinton's? I'm sorry. Okay, so this is Clinton Street out front? This is the this house is the right street. here. Yeah, okay, okay, this I'm sorry. Street. Okay, so right here. So the water went out during a heavy storm, it'll flood here and flow east towards the pond of Legacy. So there's a ditch that runs down That's correct. Down here. So is that the area that you're Yeah, trying? and sometimes it came close to coming into a cellar. So it seems to me that the grading associated with this new septic would prevent water from approaching the house, the house, right? So it's going to divert it. Okay. Did you have another question? Or? No, I'm also. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, um, any other questions from the audience? Uh, right, if I get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent with uh, standard conditions and pending receipt of um, the dewatering plan to Don. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll send you that phone tomorrow. Thank Thanks. Moving right along. You ready, Don? Crandall, this is a continuation of the next one. So, Crandall Hicks, 27 Lumber Street. This is a notice of intent. Continued to construct a health club. Hi, Jeff. Hi, good evening. We're still waiting for uh, Jesse Johnson okay. from Bowler. I apologize for that. Sure. I think he probably yep. looked at the agenda and saw 9 o'clock. Okay. And, uh, All right, we'll give him some time. We can so move on to the next one. We'll get the, give him a little time. We'd appreciate it. Sure, yeah, Thank no you problem. Much. You're welcome. Apologies. Okay, Abbott Realty Trust. This is a continuation of an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Good evening. Joyce Hastings from GL Engineering. Good evening. Abbott Realty Trust. Uh, we did a wetland delineation out at the property that's off of Blueberry Lane. Um, I walked the site with Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, we changed a couple of wetland flags over here to increase the wetland. Um, since the original filing, I've closed out the loop. Originally it ended, and so we closed it out here. Um, I got a call to look at 
uh, and delineate a wetland that was off-site over here adjacent to the EMC, um, which I went and put flags out there, located the detention basin and the, uh, um, the settling basin on the back side of it. I also located the edge of the ditch that runs around the edge of the property over here. Um, and it sets up uh, a buffer zone on the property that I didn't originally have on there. Okay, good. All right, uh, Matt, you're in concurrence with the delineation? Yeah, this was a really difficult site to delineate. Um, just because of the topography? Yeah, or? and just it's, it was Dense. just, vegetation was growing where Odd it seemed vegetation. like it shouldn't, and soils were head scratching worthy. Uh, but I think we got it where it where it needs to be. So yeah, I'm in agreement with that. I didn't go out and look at the additional flags off site, but I had gone and looked at it before Joyce flagged it, and it appears to be about where I expected it to be. So okay. I think it's fine. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? Uh, yes, I, I'm gonna butter. Um, yep. So you can get your name and address, please. Sure. Uh, Alex Scott, 15 Blueberry Lane. Here. So, all of this um, area that you're looking to put these roads in, um, it, it all sort of flows towards Blueberry Lane. And those houses along Blueberry Lane that you see there have water problems, both uh, surface water as well as the water table. Um, and so, we have concerns, a lot of us along Blueberry Lane, about development there. Um, what cutting down trees around that area that suck up gallons and gallons of water, big oak trees, um, what that's going to do to our yards and our basements. Um, just a, a lot of concern around how this whole thing is going to be managed, the recharging of the wetlands, how's that going to be done. Um, is it going to be, I, I mean, right now a lot of us feel like we're sort of on the precipice in terms of water coming in, mm -hmm. um, and if that's not done correctly, it's frankly very scary to us, a lot of us on, on the railing. Okay. Um, okay, I think we got it, um, and understand your concerns. Um, at this point in the hearing process, all we're doing is verifying the location of the resource areas. Um, so we're not approving any kind of streets um, or development activities per se that would all um, come to us again you know if the developer at some point decides that he is going to propose something um, so again at this point all we're doing is um, verifying and documenting um, where the resources are located on the property so that's the intent of, of the filing tonight yes ma'am Mm -hmm. um, just curious, I mean, I've been, around, I've been a resident of Hockney for 18 years, I know that, that, that water tables can shift and wetlands can move. Um, my understanding was is this wetland, uh, the pool itself, did move um, from initial um, filings way back 25 years ago. Um, I'm not sure whether or not the building of the marathon school had anything to do with the shift. But I can tell you that even though it's been, you know, a fairly wet few years, there's definitely been a noticeable difference in terms of, I think, people's property mm -hmm. since that school was built. Um, you know, I don't know how many trees were removed. I don't know what kind of um, water remediation was done for that property. I don't know where it went. Um, I don't know if that might have anything to do with it. But I, I do definitely notice a difference. And I know that there are things in place um, to accommodate all of this building, with the sewer system, and, and how to fill up all of these um, uh, these reserve spots. And I don't think that they're working properly because some of them are empty. So I don't know if any I don't know if anybody has looked into why they're not filling up and our properties are. So the detention basins at the Marathon School you're referring to? Or? So, no, we have, we have basins. I oh, in your development? Have. Okay. Yeah, and the one behind 36 is always dry. Okay. So I'd like 
I don't know if anybody's given any consideration to figure out why that's the case. But something, something needs to come to look at, I think. It might be a design issue or, um, okay. And I do know that properties at the end of the street, like 42 down that way, that is the last basin that's supposed to fill up, and that one fills and overflows. So something's not working right. Okay. Does that own, um, do you know if the drainage system, the infiltration basins are, is this through a homeowners association in Blueberry Lane, or that's town, it's town? I, I don't know who owns it or who's responsible for it, but we don't pay an association. <coughs> I think it's, Blueberry Lane is town it's owned, right, Don? Right? Yeah. It's, it's road, town yeah. street. I'm going to try road. and see if I can it's a public way. see if yeah. we've got anything in the GIS. But it's still could Sometimes be. the basins are finished. Well, it could be a, so a butter's response. Right. Yeah. We can just message a concern to the DPW. And where are they? Yeah, because they typically um, uh you know, they can take a look at the detention basins to see if they're, and they won't do an analysis, but they can actually go out there and take a look at it to see if there's a, you know, an obvious issue. Um, and, uh, you know, they may or may not be able to determine um, what's going on based on just a visual kind of drive-by inspection or looking at it, but, you know, we can certainly uh, communicate to them, you know, your concerns, have them take a look at it. I don't know what that'll accomplish, but um, this just seems like there are multiple factors for why properties are wet, why things are shifting. It just kind of seems like there's a number of things happening. Yeah, yeah, and it's happening in a few other locations in town too. So I think it's just a byproduct of all the development that's going on. Um, but uh, yeah. I think the, the other thing, just that she mentioned, uh, Stephanie mentioned the Marathon School, it doesn't show up on any of these maps, so it's easy to forget it, but it's huge. It's the biggest thing in the area. Yep. Um, yep. So it's just something not to forget. We won't forget it. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Google Earth doesn't have it. Uh, okay. We, we understand, I mean, we have the full commission here, so we understand your concerns about the stormwater so if anything comes before us you know, certainly um, as an abutter you'll be notified you know if they come before us again with proposed development so you'll have the opportunity to um, weigh in at that point in time so yeah. all right you're welcome right but it doesn't exist but it was incorporated in that. that's i think that's why it shows up that's what i'm thinking so i guess so you would if you were to I'm not part of this design I'm not part of the design group. That okay. that'll be that'll come forward. Okay. Yeah. Tom, what is that that you have up? That's the town's GIS when I turned on the stormwater system. So this is the area. Catch basins. It, it was to, even though this doesn't exist, so I'd assume this exists, this stormwater system here, but this doesn't exist yet, but it was designed under the old design into the into Yeah, the just like this system? is still there's still lots here. Right. Well, those are well, those, paper yeah, lots those are all right. So, a long so it, time ago. there's an approved subdivision, and yeah, that's an approved, what, well, this is yes, of. from a long time ago, mm -hmm. right? But uh, the road's not in. Active. The road's right. not no. right. You know, so that's why it's like you got to take this with a grain of salt. You'd yeah, have yeah. to assume this is where they designed it, but it doesn't exist. But these would exist. So, but, what? but I think an important note to make here is that if this lot were to be developed, there'd be some responsibility, I would think on the developer to look at the rest of the drainage system oh, yeah. Yeah. that they're connecting into that it is yep. Yep. sized accordingly. Yeah. Sized right, built right, and functioning. Right. 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 Yep. Yeah, that probably... But I don't know how that would go through. Yeah, I wonder why is that showing up as an existing... It is weird. Yeah. Because it, it, it's showing up, I'm sure, because it's an approved subdivision, and that's why it's right. they, ju they just showed whatever got approved, not right. necessarily what was constructed. What was constructed? And and I'm not proposing anything now. I'm just no, I know. Going right. Right. Yeah, right. We got it. Yeah. Right. Um, We're just trying to get some background for the right. comments. That's all I was trying to do. Yeah, it should be like a different color though for approved as opposed to <laughs> existing. <laughs> And, and, and the GIS is a contractor. Yeah. You know, so it's not 
Yeah, the town yeah. doesn't, you know, it's basically now it's, it was people GIS, now it's Geo. Map Geo. Yeah, Map Geo. They sub it out? Yeah, yeah. Map Geo. So, we're just getting used to this new one. Yeah. When did they, so when did they switch from people? A couple months ago. A couple months ago. Yeah, it's real blast. I like the old one. Map Geo. <laughs> yeah, we should maybe let them know that that's a concern. Well, and anywhere it talks Flag about it for them, it's, you, know. you know, not a legal document, blah, blah, blah. Anything you turn on, right. it's got all disclaimers, you know, yeah. so it's just take it with a grain of salt, yep. you know. Jason, can I ask one question about sure. what's showing on the left side of the screen, far left? Are those water, are those mm -hmm. pools over there? This is, what, this is what the GIS is guessing about wetlands might be. So those pools on the side that, that run where Hayden Row is, right. where do those, I mean, do those then follow topography to? Yeah, I, I, if you want to, I've got, actually, for this is the town's land. I've got plans on that that I can, you send me an email and I'll, I'll email you these plans. Yeah. That'll be more definitive than this. This is just a GIS with a guessing. I've got plans where there's survey, topo, and for the wetland school. delineations. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if yeah, yeah. that is heading toward us. Shoot me an email. Us. I know Mr. Scott just yeah. sent me one. Oh, so. well, but again, this is all prior to 2017, so it, it could have changed since Marathon School was built. Well, yeah. that's what Don's saying. He has more updated plans. Okay. That and are more we're getting, and we're getting, and they're, they're in the, right now they're making as built for the Marathon School. I've got plans that show what was approved what exists and what well, they were going to build, topography, blah, blah, blah. And we should be getting ASBO plans short, you know, I'd say within a month or so. Okay. they they got to go out and shoot all the, the grades. and But, yeah, information's still coming in. So on the map, on school. But it's more detailed than what's shown here. Yeah. yeah. So then if, if all of that is heading toward our street, is that does that become a town issue? Because it's town-owned hey, land? Jeff, can I point out something? Yeah. That's those those don't represent impounded water or surface no, water of any no, substantial just, depth. No, it's just they're just they're wetlands, delineations, the wetlands plants <coughs> as visible from so they're well, not impoundments see, see, that are you can see how inaccurate this is because when you compare it to the delineation plan, it's not right. it's right. not right. showing it's this wetland. Showing it. yeah. That's what I'm getting at. So whenever it's you go in the GIS, you know, the key thing is it's not a legal documents of reference only, well, sort of make no claims. You know, concerning the validity or accuracy of the GIS data presented on this map, yeah. it's it's just for. Yeah, but like it's just but even not, not water bodies. Right, right, you may show it, but right, it's not a surface yeah. water body. So that's basically, that, yeah. Where water, yeah. water could flow out here's of it. The, here's the legend, on the surface, you know, so maybe groundwater, but yeah. yeah. Okay. DEP wetlands, you know, and the guessing that they might wet, they might be wetlands there, and you you need to investigate further. Which the town did and said, no, those, those aren't right. The, the only other thing I'd like to ask is on the, um, there was a revised plan. So there was a, an original delineation plan in September, and then there was a revision that was made like last week. Yeah, I got both it, those. It, the difference that I see from those two, other than the addition of the new delineated wetlands on the far right of the picture, there's a difference on the, if you, if you bring up uh, one of them. So Here's the I first can, one. If I can approach here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is the first one. It looks like in this one, the, the wetlands go out, kind of out around this street here. And in the newer one, they barely touch this street and then come back. And this is kind of a oddly unnatural straight line. I'm wondering how we get this straight line here, because that seems less accurate than a rounded line that I would think a wetlands would follow, unless there's like a something under the ground or something that's causing it to be. So I, I can address that. So when we go out and, and either initially delineate wetlands, or in my case, review somebody else's wetland, we're analyzing the vegetation that's growing there, as well as hydrological conditions. That includes looking at the soil, looking at surface hydrology, things like that. So I wouldn't disagree that oftentimes wetlands will follow topographic contours that may be more rounded, but not always. And we just have to base it on the conditions that we find on the site. So 
you know, the original plan that was submitted, I went out and looked at on my own, then met Joyce out there, and we walked, literally we looked at every flag out there and came to agreement on where the modifications were. And when we're establishing the flagging or changing the flagging, we're not sort of thinking about the shape or how it might affect some future project as far as, you know, that paper road there. It's just where are the criteria that are met to qualify mm -hmm. it under state or local regulations, and that's where the flags go and they get surveyed and put on the plan. Thanks. Okay. If I can get a motion to close and approve the resource area, the abbreviated resource area of delineation. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Okay, Mr. Crandall, well, not Mr. Crandall, Crandall Hicks Company, um, 27 Lumber Street, Notice of Intent. This is a continuation for the construction of a health club. I'm just going to set one go here. Good evening. Good evening. Take that post out and have a better view. I know, right? <laughs> See what I can do about that. <laughs> this is one building I don't want to land on my head, please. <laughs> Jesse Johnson with Bowler Engineering, here before you tonight for the continuation of the Bless you. notice you. of intent filing for 27 Lumber Street. And the last time we were with you, we were sent home with some homework. Mm -hmm. And we've done quite a bit of that. So I think um, we didn't give you guys much time to review it. I apologize for that. There was a lot of things that we had to get done. I'll just give you a brief overview of what we have done, and then we can dig into anything if you'd like. Okay. Uh, since the last time, there was the need to reflag the wetlands that were out there because they were over three years old. So we had our consultant, got our consultant, go out, delineate the wetlands, and then your peer review consultant went out and confirmed or adjusted as needed. Mm -hmm. Then we went out and survey located each of those locations. So not only Goddard's flag locations, but Lucas's um, adjustments. Okay. Um, then Goddard went back out a second time to review the adjustments to see if he would want to adjust again. Um, he did suggest that we could make some further adjustments to go between maybe his original line and the adjusted line. Uh, we've taken the approach, though, of just sticking with the adjusted flags by your peer review consultant and the ones that were agreed upon by Goddard. Your, rather than having everybody go back and forth, trying to send the survey crew back out again and just we said forget it let's just go with your consultants whatever was agreed upon so the plans that you have before you reflect the agreed upon flagging and the adjusted flagging by Lucas okay and we've updated all the buffer zones as such and then I also updated all the tables that were going to be impacted by that as far as the amount of disturbance within each of the buffer zones uh, if any of the waivers had to be adjusted so I gave you a formal response letter, and on the second page, the tables update. I'll give you just a brief overview of, really, there weren't any significant impacts um, from the line being redone again. I guess the thing I would point out on the plan, which I'll move this a little closer, the wetland line in this region see? right here, you can see that. Near that basin, that's the that's the area where the flagging came a little bit closer to the project than the previously approved line from the prior submission. So that impacted the buffer as it relates to our stormwater basin. And then the only other one that got a little bit closer, I guess I would note, than the last time was over here. One of these flags got a little bit closer, that brought us into 
um, zero to 50 slightly. So the 50 foot now comes through here, whereas before it was five feet to the south of that. Okay. But otherwise, actually, the line improved in a number of areas. So our disturbance numbers even went down further further than what was submitted to you a month and a half ago, two months ago. Okay. Right. Good. So just to kind of give you that update. And what that does, uh, as I mentioned on that second page for our table, the waivers that we are requesting previously approved, we were at 32 feet for non-residential activity. We're asking for 35 this time. Um, limit of structure required for non-residential previously was at 49. We're asking for 50. Stormwater management structures, including outfalls, previously were at 42. Now we're asking for 40, and that's related to the stormwater basin I just mentioned. And then uh, previously for um, a limit of structure itself at 50, we're now 43, again, because of the stormwater management basin itself being considered um, a structure and then its outfall uh, closer. So that was the only adjustment there, but uh, overall, as I had mentioned, the amount of disturbance within the buffer zones for each uh, got lower than previously approved back in 2015 and then what was submitted for prior. Okay. All right. Uh, some of the other things that we had asked, were asked to submit were um, some verification that the stream adjacent was not perennial, that it was indeed intermittent. So we provided evidence that was submitted for previous um, submission, but then also, I guess, in the interim, uh, there's been some other work in the area that proved that that stream is indeed intermittent. So we provided that uh, for record. Uh, we've also uh, provided a, there was question whether some of the low areas on the property that were showing um, some wet holding water and vegetation, if there was any issue with that. So I provided a letter um, from Mr. Green that documented construction activity. Those were part of the SWIP that we had. So we have a, an active SWIP. We had temporary settlement, settling basins on the property because the site was cleared. So we had to set up our stormwater controls as part of that SWIP. And that's what those areas are deemed. So we provide you a letter just for that evidence okay. for your record. Um, that's really a brief overview of a lot of the work we've submitted to date. I don't think there's anything outstanding we owe other than an updated uh, septic plan that um, Don had asked that we provide the submitted one and the updated one. So I just tonight submitted the one that we submitted to the Board of Health. They're going to probably have a few edits back to us when I get those in a final plan. I'll submit that back to your record. But I did note that the wetland line adjustments actually improved the offsets to the septic components. So the wetland is farther away from the leaching field and also farther away from the septic tanks, which I would imagine that's what your concerns are. Mm -hmm. okay. And then once it's agreed upon, as far as the wetland flags, we can then send you an updated coordinate Excel, Excel file that gives you all the coordinates for all the agreed upon flags. I was just waiting to hear back from you guys that you're good with the line as shown, and then I can give you that information as well. Okay. Jeff, if I yep. could comment on that. So sure. I wasn't able to look through all the stuff you submitted, but I did take a look at the revised wetland boundary plan, and it appears to be accurate to what, you know, my changes were and everything. So okay. I'm, I'm good with that, with that plan. All right, then we can get you the coordinates on those. <coughs> okay. All right, good. Um, so I'm just looking at Beta's comments. It looks like... Um, their review is um, good for the project. They had a couple conditions, um, which we would include as standard conditions. Um, and I think, Matt, you're just going to need some additional time to go through the information that was submitted. Yeah. Um, so we'll need to continue it out. But at this point, are there any questions or comments from the commission? No oh, buddies or anyone else has anything. Yep. Yeah. Questions or comments from the audience? Go ahead, Don. Um, uh, back at the the bull is, uh, I think it's your 1020 um, 
the, the, the uh, comment number four, page four, they uh, requested a, um, a waiver from the, from the oh, bylaw. The so the commission really hasn't had a chance to discuss that. I don't know if um, this was in Betis. I'm sorry, in Bowlers. Oh, Bowler. Um, um, so they they let me bring it up for you. So this yeah. Is Ten twenty four. So we're essentially asking for a waiver from your local bylaw fee and transfer the money that we did submit for that. We're just asking that that money may be, be trans, um, transferred over and help pay for the peer review services, seeing as though we've already been before you recently and we paid that local bylaw fee one time already. If we could, rather than paying that substantial fee again a few short years later, if we could just use that as part of um, deferring the peer review cost for this additional submission. So just and I was trying to get caught up on what they were what they were talking so just to give you some background information <coughs> file number 1591 the first NOI back in 2015 um, they had um, submitted a $1,500 filing fee and then for the amount of work in the buffer zone was 856 square feet half of that would be 428 so they submitted a bylaw fee of 1928 the um, act was 537.50. Uh, total was 2465.50. And they also submitted a $3,500 consultant fee. Yeah. So, and now, today. So, what, what date was that, Don? I'm sorry. It was 2015? Yeah, back in 2015. That was uh, the NOI. So, and on this one, 1690, they submitted a $1,500 filing fee. They estimated. Um, 1,080 uh, square feet of disturbance inside the 50, so that worked out to $540. Um, and they have not submitted uh, the consultant fee, but it would be the same based on the project cost, $3,500. So now they had 1,000, but the new numbers you just provided, um, let's go to documents. So right now you're talking. 3,103 square feet. So if you take 3,103 square feet, half would be 1,551.50. If you subtract the 540 they already submitted, you're looking at a difference of $1,011.50. So, and you're asking that the 2,040 that you submitted be applied to the 35. The 35. So you right. so you're asking for a waiver of of the the bylaw, but you want it to roll over into that. Right. But you're also based on these new numbers, you'd still be a thousand short. <coughs> I guess now I don't know how you know. So now would your request change? Yeah. Whatever ultimately the final calc is for the local bylaw fee, we're just, we're asking that that be applied to the peer review fee given the quick turnaround that we've basically had to reapply again for this. And if we had just done an amendment, yes, I know. If we had just done an amendment, we probably could have avoided thousands of dollars of extra work. Um, but that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm okay with that. Um, so you just, would you be looking just for the... So the difference would be applied to the... Yeah, so the consulting fee. So right now you've got two thousand and forty dollars submitted. So you're looking to have that rolled over into a consultant fee, which is, we don't have anything. Right. So right. I'd ask, and then you wouldn't look for the thousand dollar difference because of yeah. the new disturbance limit within right. the zero to fifty. Yeah, because that calculation yeah. was based on the old weather line. Now it's a new one, so they were estimating a thousand eighty eighty feet. Now it's up to three thousand. It's triple the amount of area in the uh, in the in the fifty foot. And that's a result of the the stormwater basin that I just pointed out. So that's all that extra disturbance is essentially because of this right here. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, when you're all done Jerry, with the, yeah. the like financial piece, can I ask a question? <laughs> well, get, I'm like totally confused about something. Uh, are we good? No, I don't. I think I don't think we decided okay. yet. <laughs> so I have a question. When you're all done with that. All right. Okay. What do those uh, fees go towards? So basically, 
the. Uh, I mean, obviously, I know the consultant fee. Right, the right. Other so one. basically, typically, your your filing fee would be for dealing hours, with all right? your all your compute all your all your costs basically. Administry. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then and then, then the consultant fee would be dealing with with like any yeah. consultants you need. You know. So I could check with because basically we deposited this money as a filing fee, you know, which goes into the filing fee bucket. So I just talked with finance and I'd say, well, can we just, no, I, we, we classify that wrong. We, we want to classify it as a consultant fee. So yeah, let's, let's I mean, we have to continue do. this out. Can we just defer this to yeah. the next so we can just take sure. a look through an analysis and take sure. a, yeah, we'll consider yeah. it, obviously. Okay. Thank but, you. Um, but rather than just trying to no. figure this out yeah. in our heads and, and make, I'd, a, I'd make run a rash over, decision. Like an hour before the meeting, I had to run over to pull 1591 to figure out how much money they gave us back in the day. <laughs> You know, I yeah. figured you didn't know that off the top of your head. So. Yeah, I mean, I, my sense is I think we can work with you on this. Okay. Um, you know, we just want to make sure our, our costs are covered. Exactly. Uh, that's yeah. 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 No, I mean, we're not, we're, we're, we're not looking to double fair. bill you. No, no, no. And that's all we're right. asking yeah. for. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. I'll work with finance on that. Too. Okay. All right. Thank you, Don. Carrie, you have a Carrie's question. Yes, Carrie. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was never going to so, I'm not used to you being that far away. I know. This is really weird. Um, it's the kids' table. So, excuse me if this is covered because I'm getting confused between the old filing and new filing. But I feel uncomfortable when there's stormwater management that's off site. So, can you explain and maybe it's again why it couldn't be done on site and what precautions you're taking for long term operations and maintenance? And you know, do you have an easement? We do have an easement for that, yeah. There's a permanent legal easement, easement, legal yeah, easement in record. place for that, yeah. So why, again, couldn't you do it on site? So it, it was contemplated way back when, when it was originally designed that way, because, frankly, for the elevations that we are at on that site, if you've ever been out there, it drops off pretty significantly. And we only had one spot we could really put the septic system, and that's in front underneath the parking lot. And once we did that, that really limited our available area for stormwater. And what I usually try to do is put my stormwater around the perimeter, and I try to put many basins instead of one big basin. That's what they kind of give you for guidance in mass stormwater guidelines, is just try to spread out the areas that you're infiltrating so you don't have one slug in one basin. So we broke it up into smaller basins around. And there was a time when this property was all owned by somebody different, and he was offering up to our client, look, if you build this out, I can give you access on my abutting property. You'll just need an easement for stormwater controls because it's surrounded essentially by wetlands. There'll be no development there, but that's typically suitable for stormwater. So that's what really drove that. Um, as far as what's gonna be needed for it in long-term maintenance, it's gonna be in the same, it actually is in the same operation and maintenance plan where you have to provide a map to the operator of the facility that tells them exactly where each BMP structure is, not only the basins, but catch basins, manholes, anything that needs regular maintenance and inspection is, we developed a checklist that's in the stormwater report, so they'll take the checklist in hand, they have to walk around the site, they have to note the condition of everything, and then they also have to do the maintenance as stipulated in the O&M. So that basin is detailed in the O&M as far as location, what's required to be inspected, and maintenance on a periodic basis so it won't be over it won't be missed and it's often if i believe practice in town is you guys actually require annual reports on stormwater systems for other projects in town so we'll have to show compliance with that as well mm -hmm. where's the pid the i'm sorry a pid where's the pid around all this stuff is it all tied mm -hmm. in together so, uh, like a fence or there's no fence around it, no, no. Um, it's down the hill, if you will. Um, that shows a little bit going down in the grading. So the property line, property line's right here, and the basin's just up in there. So there's the wetland surrounding it. So there's nothing that can be done in that area other than some stormwater controls. And we couldn't or fit nothing. it. nothing. <laughs> yeah. The septic system is right here, so there was really no opportunity to put that anywhere else. Otherwise, I would have to take that huge slug and put it in another basin somewhere on the site. And frankly, that would not really be as good a system as I have designed now. Yeah. 
Does that answer your question, Gary? Yeah, it answered my question. Okay. Okay, questions or comments from the audience? So we'll continue this out to the third. Will I give you enough time? Yeah, what, I, I guess I just need to know what else you guys need from me. I think I've given you everything to date, so I'd probably be looking for a response back from yeah. from you guys if you need anything else or any yep, Matt, additional um, information. You think you'll have time to? Yeah. Okay. So we'll continue it out to the third. Okay. And we'll take a look at the uh, fees way as well. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for the next that. Meeting. Yep. Next time. Okay. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you next time. time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Borrego Solar, Zero Wood Street. This is a continuation of a notice of intent. Good evening. Good evening. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, just gonna give a brief rundown of what's changed since our last meeting. Um, first, I think that there were a couple documents that the Commission wanted to see, uh, namely the beta uh, review that was done for the Planning Board, which was provided to Don, as well as uh, the sup uh, bylaw supplement. We revised that, updated that with the, the numbers that this plan reflects, um, mm -hmm. provided that. Couple of changes since the last time we met. We tried this plan. I tried to break out the numbers and kind of make them make a little more sense. Um, so we still have this restoration area outside of the, the fenced area, um, but we've highlighted kind of the area that would be riverfront uh, restoration. It's still same restoration, same you know removal of gravel, uh, decompaction, you know adding wet uh, wet mix seed mix, um, but we've broken up this area to kind of show that, you know, this 10,650 square feet <coughs> offset this uh, riverfront impact that's within the, the fenced area. And then this hatched area is basically the offset for our buffer zone impacts. We included, this was noted last time, we included these other um, isolated wetland impacts, buffer impacts in the total calculation. Um, and then the last change, which really is the, the, the major thing that you'll probably see here, is that we've actually revised the fence to, to avoid any impacts to that wetland, that isolated wetland. Um, so that is now outside of the fence. And therefore, we also removed the, the wetland um, restoration area that we were proposing. Replication area? Yeah, the replication area that we were proposing. Okay. Other than that, really, uh, we did increase to make sure the numbers worked, you know, matched, or either equal to or greater. We did in increase some of the restoration. This is, this area is kind of like some stone, you know, compacted, very similar to the other that will remove the stone and kind of include that in restoration uh, as well. So, other than that, uh, that's really the only changes that we've made since last meeting. <coughs> So we have 29,600 square feet of soil restoration in this area here. Yep. And we do have the oh, you the got the to table, total there. table okay, here yeah. to kind of sum them up. So that's what you were looking for. Yeah, right? this Melissa. is the yeah. yeah. So this 9,400 is this darker blue that's offset by the 10,650 in this lighter blue. And then this orange is the total of 48,775 offset by the this hatched area, which is 52,000 square feet. So the rest of restoration areas exceed the um, buffer zone exactly. impacts. Exactly. Okay. And not only exceed them, but they're also closer. They're in the more you know proximate to the wetland resource. boundary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the impacts are the the outer part of the zone and all the restoration is on the inner part of the zone. So it's a, a, it's more significant of a 
benefit to the wetlands to restore there. Yeah. And the panels are out of the IVW, so thank you for that change. Um, okay. All right, and then just the southern portion of the site, you have that plan, so we can take a look at it. Can I just ask really quickly, sure. I wasn't sure. here at the last meeting, but I watched it on TV. Um, where were the panels that were in the uh, isolated wetland? The ones you said just got removed? They were no, all in here. here. So they were, though, that was... There, yeah, this basically that was a lot of the discussion last time was yes. that section, and there was something about shadows and, and all sorts of things. Yeah, I think. Okay, yeah. so that's what's been removed. That, yep, this this fence kind of used to do that, so we Wonderful. removed Thanks. that out. Yep. Yeah, so just to, to kind of provide a little background since the last meeting, um, once we adjourned, you know, I had been thinking about because I think I messaged the applicant that we felt, you know, fairly comfortable with what was proposed, including the panels in the in the resource area at the time. Once the meeting was adjourned, um, I had some additional time to think about it. And the more I thought about it, the more uncomfortable I was with, with setting that precedent. And then, you know, the impacts to the resource area associated with the shading, you know, the 20-year 20 plus year maintenance of the um, of the resource area that we required because of the panels. I had subsequent discussions with Don and Matt, and then um, you know just became exceedingly uncomfortable with that. I talked to um, Borrego um, about the concerns, and they basically agreed that they would remove the panels from that resource area. Um, and we also discussed that since they were doing that, they wouldn't need to do the actual replication areas that were previously proposed um, to mitigate or offset that effect. So, um, again, thank you for uh, working with us on that. Um, okay, so the southern portion of the site. Yeah. shows the whole site. This is what we were just looking at, this mm -hmm. northern area. So in the south, this this is a wetland resource area as well as a vernal pool delineated. We are not impacting any jurisdictional areas in here, so our limit of disturbance is outside of the 100-foot buffer of the wetland or the 125-foot buffer for the vernal pool, whatever's you know further out. Um, other than that, really the only impacts are within um, this gravel road, which is existing, this is Mechanic Street. We're just going to be trenching and placing underground conduit in that road. Other than that, there's no other um, impacts to jurisdictional areas for the project. Okay. Okay. Um, and then. I guess a question that I just wanted to ask, um, you know, you guys had the issue with the project that you were constructing out in Warren with the stormwater, and we just wanted, you know, confirmation from Borrego that, you know, we weren't going to experience any kind of related issues when the site development is ongoing here at our site in Hoppington. Yes, that, um, that project kind of prompted us to be a little bit more conservative with our stormwater estimates, particularly with how we're modeling in our hydrological models the array field. So this project, um, Beta has reviewed the stormwater, this project mm -hmm. um, has modeled that in a more conservative fashion. So uh, that shouldn't be an issue for this site. And in addition to that, there are several areas of this site most notably the northern that's actually going to be improving. But this area, there's tree clearing, so it's a valid concern, but we have um, taken that into consideration with our modeling, and we're including these um, stormwater features on this kind of to protect this wetland resource So it, it won't be an issue? Correct. Right, okay. During not, construction not shouldn't be. or after? Is this Correct. A question of during construction that was an issue? Was right, an issue? right, yes. We, and we, you know, um, on the grading and erosion control plan, we have a full suite of silt fence and silt sock proposed to mitigate that during construction and then obviously post stormwater 
uh, management plan to make sure that that doesn't happen after construction. Okay, um, so BETA reviewed it. They had a couple um, just conditions that they suggested we include, you know, which we are inclined to do. So that's just the uh, require the cleaning and disposal of debris uh, from the construction area, require the submittal of a maintenance agreement um, pursuant to Appendix D of the Hopkins and Stormwater Regs upon application of the building permit. Presumably, you've already seen this. Um, the final SWIP um, prior to the start of construction, and then a completed signed operation maintenance plan prior to construction. So, we're good with those? Yes. Okay, questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I'm just going to say that I'm unhappy with the riverfront and the replication thereof. I think there's too much riverfront affected and there's not enough replication. Is that referring to the blue part of the map? Patrick? Yeah. So we have degraded riverfront area on the site. I get that. Right. And so the, the standards require under the redevelopment standards to mitigate at a one-to-one -one ratio on degraded areas. And those mitigation areas are to be closer to the river than the impact areas. Okay. So we are at greater than one-to-one -one okay. and closer to the riverfront areas. So it's, a, it's considered under 10.585 an improvement to riverfront. So we're improving existing conditions of the riverfront to meet the capacity of the riverfront for wildlife habitat standards, aesthetic values, recreational values, and the other in interests of the Rivers Act. Jeff, can I yep. follow up on that a little bit? Yes. So one of the those other requirements, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, requires actual planting of woody vegetation within the restoration area, as well as grading to promote infiltration. And I'm not sure that those two, I'm not sure, is there any grading shown on the plan? Not for this area other than the decompaction. I mean, this is a very flat area. Right. As you know, so there's really very little grading that could be done to promote more infiltration? Well, it could be graded a little bit lower so that water that flows into it infiltrates as opposed to just running straight off. Um, and then certainly I think it's, I think it would be legitimate to require planting of woody material because the performance standards require that in the act. Anything that we do plant in there as part of our mitigation plan, we would, we would go in with planting low profile you know, woody vegetation, not, not, well, that's, not things that grow. Yeah, that's another concern that I would have is that if you're doing restoration, it's not true restoration if you're <coughs> wanting to maintain it over time. This will not be maintained. Outside of the fence is not will not be maintained, will not be mowed. And this is actually to the north of the array here, so there's really not even a concern for the height. Maybe, you know, some of this area to the east and west you know, in 20 years, that potentially could be an issue if uh, you know a large tree grows. But we are we don't foresee that in the life of the history or the life of the system. Um, but again, the, where this is not so, there is a planting area. plan proposed there, right? We are proposing um, well wetland seed mix. Um, there's there we have not proposed you know, specific. Woody vegetation. Can we incorporate that into the restoration? I think that, yeah, that we would be agreeable to that. Okay. Um, you know, and it can be shrubs, you know, rhododendrons, blueberry bushes, you know, the typical uh, native type species. That would be something we could submit prior to a building permit as a condition. If we submit something that is, you know, a, a shrub planting at a, a typical restoration density of something like, you know, eight feet on center spaced randomly, you know, that could be submitted and reviewed to your consultant prior to construction. I think that could probably be conditioned. Yep. I agree with that, Matt. Yeah, I think so. And again, you know, maybe something on the plan that notes that when it's decompacted and 
regraded that is done in a way to promote infiltration that it's you know there can be uneven topography as much as anything so that there's no lower pockets yeah. it's going to promote wildlife habitat value um, in addition to the infiltration part of it yeah I mean I see no issue with doing that as part of the sort of restoration that we you know decompacting and just just excavate a out. little bit more in certain areas to yeah. get the pockets I don't think that's a huge lift here right. um, okay Okay, um, questions or comments from the audience? Okay, um, so we'll take a vote on this. So the, we have the, uh, this uh, predicated on the uh, beta request, the submittal of the planting plan um, for Matt and Don to review. Um, we'll take a, two votes on this, one under the bylaw and one under the act. Um, so we'll split it. So if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent, as discussed under the act. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. And if I can get a motion under the bylaw, please. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're welcome. Are you looking to start construction? Uh, probably not till next year. Spring. Yeah, we have to wait for our interconnection <laughs> items. Yep. So. Okay, good. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> was there a reason for the split vote? So cool. um, just in case. Yeah, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. So. Because of the isolated feature? Yeah. I don't think we've had a unanimous. So, 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 yeah. so, so just, so, just in case it was <laughs> the first one. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Have, have a nice Thanksgiving, folks. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Okay. Um, Legacy Farms, East Main Street, right away. This is a project change request. How are you? Good evening. Good. Mr. McDowell, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you. Getting there. Thank you for your time. I well, brought uh, eight copies of this. Enough. One for the record. So a little background, as you know, I was in to see you I forget how many months ago relative to the sidewalk in East Main Street. And one of the things we were doing is we were moving back the guardrail. And there was a concern at the time that I had mentioned we were going to have to pour some concrete over in that general head wall area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after we moved the guardrail back, and you, by the way, there are pictures in the back of this plan. Okay. So you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I actually. So I actually, it, yeah. I met uh, Don out there to look at the uh, <coughs> the area, and the conclusion we came to to make this truly secure, to, so nothing washes into the wetlands, is, and it would also secure the guardrail, is we cut individual components of plywood along probably 189 feet, I think it was, and the idea was to then excavate out behind that and to pour a curb edge to, to lock, number one, lock the guardrail in place. But more importantly, if you look at the front of your plan, you'll see a little lower cross section on the front. And the idea of this concrete berm, if you will, along that perimeter is we would pour that three inches below the top of sidewalk. So then when we put the berm in and we put the sidewalk in, the sidewalk would come right over the top of the concrete so there would be nothing that could possibly wash into the the uh, water because there would be no soil. It would be concrete and it would be paving on top of that. And of course the sidewalk sheds towards the street into the storm drain so nothing would be going to the wetlands. I couldn't figure any other way to do it and have it work properly. Mm -hmm. uh, Don thought I should come back to you because even though I discussed somewhat concrete, I didn't discuss this amount of concrete. So I thought it was important to come back and explain this to you and hopefully get your permission. Okay. Um.
So the sidewalk will be behind the guardrail here? Um, is that no, no, could you be in front? Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so if, you, if you don't mind, I'll come over here. Actually, you can go yeah. back to that other one. That was sure. great. That one? One more? You got it. Perfect. So the idea was this, this, these pieces of plywood yep. are set to be three inches below the top of the sidewalk. The idea was we wanted to come along here and dig this back so we've got something about this wide and about this deep. And then what we would do is we'd form this edge, we'd pour concrete in here with some reinforcing rods in it. So once that's poured, then we can excavate this, put in the gravel base, put in the berm along the street where that orange line is, and okay. the asphalt would go from that berm right over to the top of concrete. So there would be no soil eroding into the wetlands, and there'd be no gravel under the sidewalk where it meets this point. Okay. That way there we can be assured, yep. not only during construction, but after construction, nothing would wash into the wetlands. And there's no work on the other side of the There's no work on the other side there. whatsoever. Okay. That's actually the best picture right there. Yeah, and that plywood's fairly secure there. So you've got it running between um, yes. girder to girder, and then there are a couple of sections where we're going to put some two by fours. Where in the if it didn't run girder to girder, um, you'd have to you'd have to stake in behind it, you know, to, to give it. It would overlap. Support you'd, have, it. you'd have like two. It right will. now, like on this one, it's one sheet going between <coughs> girder to girder. But if you go further down, I don't know if I get any shots of it. No, it's but it's basically probably... you'd have like two sheets where it would overlap, and then you would. You would um, put some reinforcements. Put in the some outside. reinforcements in behind it. So the, other, the other key thing is, if, if and when we pour it, you got to pour it stiff, stiff concrete, because if you have too much water in it, it has a tendency to want to push. Right. So basically, that, that when I first saw this, uh, I just said, "How are you going to ensure it doesn't blow out?" Yeah. You know. Well, number one, we're going to stake the entire length of the bottom. Right. right. That's important. And the other thing we want to do, we'll have a policeman come out. We park a concrete truck in the street very dry mix, we go the entire length halfway up, give it a little time to set, then we go back to the beginning and do the second layer. So you specify the dry mix with the we concrete have, we company? Have, we have it shipped dry. Okay. So we can add the water when we're on site. Because oh. a lot of times they put the water in ahead of time right. and, and it comes through yeah. and it's, you get soup. Okay. okay, so they mix it on site so you can monitor the consistency exactly. of it. Okay. Yep. It's, it's really important that you pour it stiff. Yep. Okay, I think I'm good with that. You guys. And the, the back side of the plywood is going to be reinforced with two by something. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And does that plywood During all that pour. come out eventually? Or yeah. would you and then it'll be formed to have a tendency you want to leave it. Especially because he's got it, because this it's, it's like an I beam girder and it's on the inside. It's going to be pretty So once hard the, to cement, get it out. the cement's going to fill in into the I beam and across here, yeah, you're not gonna, you're you're gonna you'd, have to, you'd have to, you'd have to, from the back side, yeah. you'd have to cut the wood up to the concrete just to pull out. And you'd it's just the top of it's going to be exposed, right? None the of concrete. No, he's going to have none of the concrete right no, up to the top. Back. Okay, so no. it'd be right up to the top. Yeah, right. so I don't see a reason why yeah. it has and to be taken out. Eventually, that would rot away, and then you'd have a concrete wall there. Right. You know, eventually this is going to get soft. Eventually, you're going to put the road across. Right. Well, not the whole length. No. Right. No, right. not the whole length. Well, I think this is, frankly, a good solution. I think it actually makes it stronger, safer, and more and less susceptible to erosion. Yeah, yep. so you don't have it slipping through the guardrail posts. Yeah. You know. Okay. Okay, a question so, so. I know nothing about. Sure. <laughs> Doesn't stop me from asking a question. <laughs> I assume there is a standard at which the guardrail has to be above the grade of the road. It's set for that. When you add four feet wide of sidewalk that's at a higher elevation is it still it's actually a, ver it's a very good question what what i did with the guardrail company is i, I gave them guidelines i said look at the sidewalk is going to follow the contour of the road the road's going up sidewalk going up i said when you set that guardrail there's going to be a six inch berm there's going to be a half inch cross pitch so that's six and a half inches i need you to assume and we stake the whole length of the form you need to have the the base elevation of that guardrail six and a half inches higher than the road. Oh, so so the answer is good question. It's actually but that's what they did. Otherwise, if you just did it randomly, never would have been right. 
Mm. And, and it's not changeable <laughs> without well, major, is, major, yeah. major, major yep. work. Well, actually, we're, we're making this guardrail much more secure because we're going to be reinforcing it with concrete. <coughs> Okay. Thank Any you. other questions? I learned something. Thank you. So I get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So, so moved. moved. And a second, please. Second. One of us. <laughs> so Jim has the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Whatever. No worries. Opposed? Okay. Very Thank good. You very Thank much. you. Have Appreciate a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank yep. you. you too. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, what did I say? Once? Okay, and if I can get a motion to adjourn. I think it's, uh, so moved. In a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.